Welcome back to Stylized Station. Have you ever wondered how artists create beautiful environments in Unreal Engine like this one? Well, today is your lucky day because that's exactly what our good friend Aloysius is going to share with us today. Now, this is just a quick breakdown. So if you're really serious about learning game art, feel free to check out my two courses where I teach you how to create beautiful and easy Unreal Engine environments like the one you see on your screen right here. And in my other course, you'll learn stylized texturing. Pretty cool stuff. You get a huge discount if you buy both at the same time, and Aloysius gets a cut of all sales from this video, so be sure to use the link in the description. Now, let's get into this week's video. Happy learning! Hello, Stylized Station. My name is Aloysius Ho, a 3D CG environment artist, currently a student at DigiPen Singapore. Today, I want to show you my process of creating this stylized 3D environment and give some tips you may find useful. I need to preface this video by saying that it will be more about my general workflow and loose technical knowledge rather than an in-depth technical tutorial because there are plenty of resources online that cover those things already. In this video, I want to cover a few topics. How I blocked out my scene in UE4, creating environment props to scale, how I added normal details to my models, getting a stylized look in Substance Painter, making a master material for quick color adjustments, background plates, and making a stylized smoke trail. To begin a scene, I like to bring in a mannequin as a scale check to make sure nothing is ill proportioned. The model I used is roughly 180cm tall. Then I block out my level using BSP brushes under the Geometry tab in the Place Actors panel. Here I created a quick arcway to demonstrate how efficient using brushes are and making quick changes. In the details panel, you can change the brush type to subtractive in order to boolean out shapes. You can also control the dimensions of the brush. This allows you to make quick adjustments to the size of the brush without affecting the scale so that when you convert it into a static mesh later and export, it will retain its dimensions. At this stage, I tried to minimize my usage of brushes. Ideally, you would use the brushes just to block out the major forms of objects and get their dimensions. Don't focus on the details, the primary focus is getting a sense of scale. After you're satisfied with the results, select the brushes. Under brush settings, create static mesh. The neat thing about using brushes is that it automatically replaces the brushes with the static mesh you just created. Export the static mesh as whatever file format you want. Personally, I use either OBJ or FBX. Then you can bring it into your 3D modeling software of choice. Moving on to creating environment props to scale, I want to talk about modeling major forms. This is not going to be a technical explanation about how to model the props, but I will share how I did things for this project. Just make sure that the dimensions of your props loosely follow the dimensions of the models you exported from the BSP brushes. For the majority of the props, it was pretty straightforward. The only props I made modular were the tower bricks and roof pieces, so what I did was make some variations of them. This way, it makes it less repetitive. For unwrapping, I like to group objects together depending on what kind of materials I plan to put on them. For example, I group the stone bricks together to share the same texture map so that when I bring the model into Substance Painter, I can texture all of them at the same time. This small habit can save you an exponential amount of time on larger scale projects. Moving on to the high poly scalp, how much time and effort I spend on the high poly scalp is directly proportionate to how close the object will be to the camera. For surface details such as rocky textures or wood grains on planks, I use brush alphas to save myself some time instead of hand sculpting each detail. For this project, I used the Orb Brush Pack by Michael Vincent. For creating rocky surfaces, personally, I like using clay buildup and trim dynamic to create an uneven surface on the bricks before using the brush alphas. However, if you want something like a big crack on the surface of an object, you need to sculpt it in manually. You can create some cracks and use pinch to make it tighter in some areas. Not everything in my scene will be scrutinized at close distances, so for props further away from the camera, I save time by not creating a high poly sculpt. Next for texturing, I chose to use a mix between Substance Painter and Designer. For all the props, I use Substance Painter, and for my landscape material, I use Substance Designer. I first start off by baking the normals of the high poly sculpt into the low poly model. Check that the curvature map looks okay and you're good to go. I want to share some things I did to achieve a stylized look. For example, after I've created a layer for edge wear, I like to apply a blur slope filter and give it a hand painter look. I also like to add layers of noise which I then blur slope to add extra detail to the model and make it feel more organic. 
I also like using saturated colors to give it a more cartoonish vibe. I'm just going to gloss over how I created my materials using designer, so forgive me if the explanations lack luster. For the grass material, I made the alphas of the pebbles using a polygonal shape and flood filter gradients to add variations to the height of the pebbles. Next, I created the blades of grass and used a tile sampler to create the patches. Then I added some noise and colour with the gradient map. For the dirt material, I used a polygonal shape and then a splatter node to stretch it out and tile it. Then I warped it and added colour to it. Here's a neat trick a classmate of mine shared with me. Shout out to Sean Lim for showing this to me. You can combine the grayscale textures like the occlusion, roughness and metallic maps into a single texture output using the RGBA merge node. You have to use a uniform white colour set to grayscale for the alpha channel or your texture won't show. So after you have your models and textures ready, it's time to assemble all of them in the scene. Next I want to talk about creating a master material. What I recommend is either making your own or downloading one. Making a master material saves you a ton of time having to set up each material individually and it also saves on performance. What a master material is, for those who don't know, is a material with a ton of parameters and texture inputs that you can create instances of. Adjusting the parameters in material instances is much faster than if you were to do it in the shader graph. This is how I make a very basic master material to allow for quick color adjustments on my diffuse map. Create as many texture sample parameter 2D nodes as you have texture maps. In my case, I typically use diffuse, emissive, normals, ORM and height. If you want to add displacement to your material, you need to select the material properties node, go to the details panel, scroll down and enable flat tessellation. Then you can plug your height map into the world displacement input. Next, plug your diffuse parameter into a desaturate node. Create a vector 3 parameter with a value of 111. Name it diffuse controls. Plug the red channel into a 1 minus x inversion node and then plug the 1 minus x node into the fraction. Multiply the green channel of your vector parameter with a desaturate node and create another vector parameter which we will name diffuse tint. Multiply those two together and plug the output to a power node and then plug the blue channel into the exponent. Lastly, plug the power node output into a diffuse input of the material node. With this master material setup, you can create quick instances, plug your texture maps into the input slots, and do quick adjustments to the color of your textures. So now you have your basic master material. If you are interested in how to do more with your master material, there are key concepts such as tessellation and displacement, vertex painting, and runtime virtual texturing blending. These three key concepts will make your scene look much more believable. Let me show you what they are. For tessellation and displacement, the closer my camera gets to the ground or the object, the denser the tessellation gets, giving more polygons for the displacement to work with. Vertex painting allows me to paint moss on my bricks without having to manually texture them in Substance Painter. RVT blending allows me to seamlessly blend the rocks into the dirt. Moving on to how I created the background plates and smoke trail. For the background plates, it's actually pretty simple. It's just a giant plane that spans the width of my camera. For the smoke trail, I created a seamless TGA texture in Photoshop. Then, I created a material in UE4 to pen the texture. Let me show you what that looks like. First, I changed the blending mode of the material properties in the details panel from opaque to additive. Then, I put the texture sample in and plugged in a panel node into the UVs. Lastly, I added a mask to make the smoke look like it trails off. Ignore the chunk of notes here, you can do this with just the texture, but I was too lazy to do it in Photoshop, so I copied a bunch of notes from my other materials over. So next I created an empty Niagara system. You can find it under the FX tab, Niagara system. You can name it whatever you want. Open it up and select the empty emitter, delete sprite renderer and replace it with a ribbon renderer. Slot the smoke material into the material slot. Delete the initialized particle and replace it with initialized ribbon and set ribbon width to 100. Then under particle spawn, I added a velocity to the particles and set the x velocity to 500. 
at a spawn rate under the emitter update and set the value to 100. Under particle update, add a solve forces and velocity. Lastly, under particle update, I added a scale ribbon width and set the value to be a curve instead of a constant. Set the value of the first point to 5 and auto curve it to smooth it out. Alright, that was a short breakdown of how I made my scene. I hope you liked it and learned something new from it. Don't forget to subscribe to Stylized Station and thank you for watching.